When it comes to achieving our dreams and our goals, we go all in. We put everything we can to make sure we can achieve them. So when I heard that BT Deutsch, Israeli national marathon winner, had made a choice to do something that would slow her progress, I was intrigued and I knew that I had to get her on the podcast to find out why on earth she would have made that choice. And the conversation was eye-opening. Welcome back. I'm Gila Ross, host of the Power Up podcast, where we bring you the very best in short inspirational ideas to level up your everyday life. Thank you so much, BT, for coming on to the Power Up podcast. It's a real privilege to have you here. BT, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Hi. So I am currently the National Marathon Champion of Israel, but really didn't start out that way. I just took up running around five years ago because I was, you know, tired of being out of shape as a mom of four young children (laughs) and never imagined my journey would take me to where I am today. I'm currently full all in on running as a professional marathon runner. I train full time. I compete for Israel. Um, My goal is to hopefully represent Israel in the world championships next year. And I have, thank God, five young children. And I'm proud really to, you know, not compromise on any of the laws of modesty or any of, you know, any of the laws of Torah, even as a elite athlete. And I really am grateful for the opportunity I have to use my platform just to, you know, be a proud representative of of Israel, but of also what it means to be a fully observant Orthodox Jew. Thank you. Thank you, BC. Thank you for firstly taking the time to, to be with us today. And um, I also want to share personally that I love following you on Instagram. Her Instagram handle is Marathon Mother. For any of our listeners who's not yet following BT, I love that your attitude is always like so positive and so upbeat and yet so real as well. Um, And as you mentioned, you know, as to to watch someone who is so fully committed to um, being an Orthodox Jew, and at the same time, who is like top of top of a game as an elite athlete. Uh, I tell my kids about it the whole time. I've got a 16 year old son and they're like, really? She's, you know, she's, she's an elite athlete. And, and it, it really, really is amazing. Um, so thank you for sp- sharing your time with us today. I think it was a few weeks ago, you, you, you shared something on Instagram that really, really made me stop and think. So obviously as an elite athlete, you have to make sure that your timing is is top notch, right? But you also shared that as your the way you dress, right, with conforming to the laws of modesty, with covering your hair and wearing a skirt, slows you down. So how how and why do you do you navigate this? Um, you know, it's been a question for me since I the since I got into you know, running more seriously, even from when I won the Jerusalem Marathon, which was in 2018, I remember reporters were always asking me, you know, wow, how do you run in a skirt? At the time, you know, I wasn't nearly as serious then. And I, I kind of laughed it off like, oh, it's fine. I, you know, it's just something I've done my entire life. It doesn't make any difference. But as I've become more competitive and more focused on improving my time, like I definitely feel that my modest clothing is makes it a little bit more challenging to to run as fast as I want. So um, now as you know, a 31 year old, um, even I, keeping modesty and as an elite athlete, I really was forced to ask myself like, why do I do this? Because even though it's something I've done my entire life, um, you know, perhaps in the past, I didn't, it didn't bother. It didn't, you know, it wasn't hard for me. And it wasn't even something that I really fully understood what I was doing. And I don't believe that anything we're doing as Torah observant Jews is meant to be without thought. Really, the purpose of why we're doing everything we do is 
is to connect and it comes from and it's it's because it's our choice and it can only be a choice if you if you choose it not just because you've done it your entire life so this is why you're doing it so that wasn't a good enough answer for me anymore and when i started to think about the things that i had learned because i've definitely learned about modesty you know people always talk about it this beautiful empowering mitzvah like we're focused on you know we want and we want to show our inward and not not just the outside and 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 that's true but then it would i would think about like but why does it matter that i need to cover my elbows like like i'm 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 in this sport just for performance no one's looking at my body it's not like i'm trying to show off my body i'm just trying to do the best possible time this clothing is what would help me get the best possible time so i'm not like trying to you know show off in that way and i thought you know even if i can't fully understand why we have these very precise details of the laws of modesty that we are obligated in you know first of all i look at every mitzvah as an opportunity to connect with hashem like i'm invested in a relationship with god and when you're in a relationship with someone you you do what they ask you because you cherish every request they have like and i actually had had an example like i remember my husband you know that, that week had said to me something like oh can you not hang clothing from like the door handle in our room and I, I my first thought I remember was like oh well why do you care like I don't care like it doesn't matter so why are you making a big deal about hanging the clothing on the door handle and then I stopped myself I'm like well he's telling me he cares so it doesn't matter that I don't care because he is asking me to do it because it bothers him so even if right. I don't understand why if I'm in a relationship with him I'm gonna respect it and it was so clear in my head it was like God is asking me to do this. So if I don't, even if I don't understand, that doesn't mean that I'm just going to be like, oh, sorry, God, like what you're saying doesn't make sense. So I'm not going to do it. No, like I want to be in this relationship. So then now I have the choice to personalize it. How does it connect to me? And what I felt for myself with modesty is like, I'm an athlete who works hard every single day. I show up, I put in a lot of hard effort and training. And at the end of the day, it's so easy to fall into the trap of thinking, oh, because I did this, this, this workout and did all these hard efforts and trained this way, that's why I had the result. But I know that not one bit of the result is because of me, it's because Hashem gave it to me. So if I want to embody that trait of what modesty really is, of humility, of knowing who is the source of your power and strength every single day, then when I wear the modest clothing, regardless of whether I see the connection of why the clothes, I'm, a, I'm trying to incorporate that trait in my life, in, in, in every single aspect of my life. And I'm able to say I dress modestly as an athlete because I want to remember who the source of my strength is in every single moment um, of, every, of every day. So that was the long answer, I guess, to your question. <laughs> That was that was that was so so powerful. I, I I can I related to it on on so many levels. I think as you say, you know, like the the analogy you gave of 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 your husband. But in a relationship, I think when we we oftentimes we start off in a relationship, we want to understand. But when we give ourselves that sort of permission to like do for the other without fully understanding, because human beings are complex, right? We don't always understand what what they want, and we and when we sort of give ourselves that permission to say like. I don't have to understand, but if it's important to you, I'll do it. It, it. It's it's such a powerful thing to bring to a relationship. And I love how you relate that back to our relationship with God, because it, it's true. You know, we can get stuck in the rut of like just doing or, or not doing because we do or we don't understand. But when we sort of like take a step back and, and sort of say, as you said, like, hold on a second, this is a relationship. And this is like, God told me that this is important to him. So even if that I don't understand, it's it's um um it's something that I'm going to buy into. I, I think that's such a, a powerful thing to for us to bring back into our lives. Thank you. And I also um I loved what what you you also said about that humility. It's like very it was very inspiring for me to hear that you know that humility because I'm sure as someone who you know puts in so much effort, I, I, I'm, I'm imagining it's not such an easy trait to sort of remember that. Hold on a second you know, to, to live with that balance of the one hand of pulling it all in and on the other hand of having the humility to realize that there is a God above that that gives us that strength. So thank you for sharing those those thoughts with us. I think that is so, so inspiring. Riti, do you have any advice, any anything that you would like to share with our listeners for, for those of us that 
sort of can be in in that space where we 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 want to do something but we either we're finding it hard or we're not really understanding why why we should do it what what would you share with us that is such a good question um you know so many thoughts coming through my head one is that like like i said i really do think that you you have to make a personal connection to the mitzvah that you're like choosing to do like i i feel like you can't just do something because oh this is what everyone is doing so i'll do it or this is why the you know i feel scared if i don't like i'm not if i don't do this i'm not going to get this like don't you can't go into it from a place of fear but on the other hand the truth is like there are some times where you 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 know you like intrinsically want it but you're not sure if you're fully ready and you kind of need to take like a make a leap and right. it might not feel like something so you might not feel like it might not feel easy in the beginning you might really not fully appreciate it the thing that i also know about with when it comes to like spiritual pleasure is as opposed to like physical pleasure so like when you're doing a mitzvah what you're you're connecting in a in something that's eternal in a relationship with hashem it's it's a spiritual pleasure the spiritual pleasure is like the more that you tap into it the greater it is you don't so like from the first moment you keep the mitzvah you might not necessarily feel um the power and beauty and like how amazing it's going to feel but over time each week that like each week that you continue to keep it each day that you continue to invest in it there's an opportunity for the like for it to the pleasure to like grow as opposed to like physical pleasure where like yeah you you the moment you bite into a piece of chocolate like it tastes amazing but then like uh, like it wears off like the excitement the joy the the you know from that same bar of chocolate it's not going to continue so it's sometimes like you need it's like you need to remind yourself in your head in the beginning when you're starting like yeah oh wow i'm not when you're like white why am i not feeling so great about it you're not feeling so great about it because you haven't even fully tapped into the power of it and it can take it can take months i think till you like really appreciate something that doesn't mean that you should stop doing it just because it didn't feel good right away i think you have to be committed to this bigger long-term vision of what you want for yourself you have to remind yourself that you're investing in something eternal something spiritual something you know and then i do think it's important to ask yourself like how can i find a personal connection to this how can i make this meaningful for me and remind yourself of that every time you're doing it i'm doing this because it's helping me in this area because i connect even to this teeny small idea about it because i know i want this in my life because i want my whatever you could find one small thing to hold on to and connect to and keep reminding yourself of i think that will hopefully be the you know best way to incorporate the mitzvah or have it into your life thank you thank you and i think i i think something that you often um write about also is that it's progress right because as you say it's an investment and I think sometimes what happens is we invest in something and we get better at it, but because we are not there yet, wherever there is, we, we forget to actually look back and say, hold on a second, how far I've come, right? So, so it's, it's, as you say, you want to invest in it because the pleasure, which is much more meaningful later, but at the same time, we have to realize also how much progress we are making when we keep at it. Yes, uh, I'm like super passionate about that. Like I... I always tell myself I'm invested in the process. And when I start to feel like sometimes overwhelmed, like, wait, why is it not working out exactly how I envisioned? Or why is it taking longer than I thought? I like, I tell myself that you really can't be so short term. Like you have to just remember that there's a long journey. And I also say, like, I also really do believe we have to be our biggest cheerleaders. And like every single baby step is progress and, and be proud of it. And and, and you know cheer ourselves on every single step of the way and if you don't do that you will never like reach it to make it to the big milestones because you'll give up before you even get close and i think also uh, on that is that like in spirituality like sometimes we forget that like we have a whole lifetime right you know if you're working on let's say becoming more patient or, or, or the thing we have a whole lifetime to 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 fix it so sometimes you know we've done it for like three days and i'm still not more patient right relax right there's yeah. a there's a whole lifetime to do it um so thank you i, I really think that was an, a fantastic conversation i've gotten so much out of it and i'm sure our listeners will um also find it very very inspiring and 
for anyone who's listening, they can follow you on Instagram at Marathon Mava. Thank you again so much for your time. Thank you, Gila. You're amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. I'd love to hear what you thought of this conversation with BT. You can get in touch with me. You can find me on Instagram at Gila Ross. And please take a moment to rate, review, and subscribe to the Power Up podcast. It really helps me out a lot. Thank you for your time and have a wonderful day.